Hi, everybody. My name's Oliver Parker. I'm uh, on the commercial team here at Blackbird. And this morning, you're also going to hear the voice of Hugh Diamond, who's our Director of Product and Operations. I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to Blackbird, the company, who we are, what kind of workflows we do, and how the, the system is architected. Uh, and then partway into the demo, I'm going to hand off to Hugh, and Hugh will run through some of the advanced functionality that we have in the, the editor uh, as part of the Blackbird solution. Now, Blackbird is a cloud-based video editing and production platform. You probably already know that, otherwise you might not be here. Um, but what that basically means is that we enable our customers to access their media. That can be file-based content or live stream content, on-premise or in the cloud. It really doesn't matter to us. Wherever that media sits, we give you a, a, a portal to access that through a web browser to do functions such as simple clipping, sequencing, and so on for very fast turnaround of content, logging and metadata enrichment tools, all the way through to a full real-time multi-track non-linear editor that runs entirely inside the web browser. Um, and then we publish out, we publish to, uh, directly to social media, um, but a lot of what we're used for is high quality publishing that then will go to OTT, VOD, digital services, um, or even through to, to traditional broadcast as well. Now, Blackbird's been in use for quite a long period of time, actually, but the history of the company is really within the traditional broadcast post-production market. So for 10 to maybe 15 years, Blackbird's been used by, and is still used by, pretty much every traditional post-production facility uh, in Soho, Manchester, and, and beyond, um, and the production companies as well. So those post partners um, will facilitate Blackbird being used by, as you can see here, BBC and ITV Productions and most of the major uh, production companies um, in the market. And the great thing about that history for us is that the, the tool set we've, we've developed over that period of time and the solution that we have has really been tried and tested and is in use every day in the kind of highest end of video production workflows. So that, that long form, uh, high end production content. Now, that's given us a, a great backing. And in the last few years, you know, we've seen a lot of, of uh, activity and growth in other areas of, of, of video production. As media companies start to move content to the cloud, maybe working with the public cloud providers, or at least they start to move live production workflows to the cloud, um, and Blackbird's ability to work um, on live streams really comes into play there. So, you know, now we're in a position where we still do the, the, the traditional broadcast post-production content workflows, but we're also used by companies you can see here, such as Delta Tray and IMG on very high-end sports content, such as the NFL, European Game Pass, European Tour Golf, and so on. We're also used directly by leagues, such as the NRL and clubs, such as Arsenal and Liverpool, that we can see here, um, all the way through to me, uh, nearly 50 regional news stations in the US market, um, partners such as Town News, and the large networks, you can see there, A&E networks and so on. And we'll talk about some examples of, of the different workflows in play at these companies as we go. Um, but as you can see, there's a, quite a wide variety of, of types of content, production workflows, and, and types of uh, customers that we're working with today. Now, the reasons, some of the core reasons that um, our customers like to, to come and, and, and use the solution uh, outlined here, I'll just run through these in a little more detail. So speed and agility is a very important one for us. Um, speed is often a big thing we talk about in terms of turnaround speed from content. So the ability to access, edit, and publish from content just a few seconds behind live is a key thing for us. And for lots of our uh, customers, getting content out as quickly as possible is important. But in terms of agility, that obviously comes from the, the, the fact that we're a completely cloud native and browser based solution. So enabling remote working uh, environments is, is great for us because there's no client hardware um, and users can be editing on content from as little as a two megabit internet connection. So we're really um, quite uh, incredibly uh, efficient in terms of, uh, of usage from home uh, and also compared to some of the other solutions that might be on the market on that front. Uh, cost savings are important, and I'll talk a bit about this as we go through. Uh, for us, this is about the architecture, and I'll, I'll run an architecture slide so we can have a look at that. Um, and the fact that Blackbird is not just replacing the actual edit function or the publish function, but all of the, the, the heavy infrastructure that often comes along with trying to hoist a, a traditional application-based workflow up into the cloud, and, and we certainly cut out a lot of that. And a big part of that is monetizing this content, making the most of the rights you have and the content you have, getting that out to market quickly, efficiently, and to as many places as possible. 
Now quality refers to both the quality of the tool set, and we'll have a look at some of the things that we can do in a, in a web browser environment today, and also the quality of the output. And one of the key things for Blackbird is that we can produce a, you know, a piece of content that's gonna to go to social media alongside an extremely high bit rate traditional broadcast uh, piece of media as well. So we span, span across the range of qualities that are needed by most media organizations today. And Video Everywhere is referring not just to creating and publishing and distributing content to multiple locations, but also having access to Video Everywhere within an organization. Um, so this is Blackbird being a single point of access that can be used by and exploited by your social media teams, digital promos, marketing teams, through traditional production, live production, highlights and packaging, um, all the way into, as I say, the traditional broadcast post side of businesses as well. Uh, so as I say, we'll, we'll expand on some of this as we go through. Now, before I run through the rest of this slide, I'm going to hop over quickly to, to the website and introduce the technology to you now. So if you go to blackbird.video, you can have a look at this after the webinar, because it's it is, you know, as, as good as Zoom is in terms of screen sharing, it's very good to go and experience this yourself. On the solution page, there's an example video here using the Blackbird technology. Now, I can play this clip as you would expect, but I can also come in and see what kind of content is coming at me here. And I can full frame jog and shuffle through this media. I have no buffering, latency, no delay times here. This is a non-linear navigation of content in my web browser. And um, I can skip through frame by frame uh, with audio feedback. I can navigate through this content playing multiple speeds, forwards, playing backwards and backwards multiple speeds. Uh, and I can actually come in here and access every single frame of media as well. Now this kind of access to content in browser is uh, pretty fundamental when it comes to, um, to, to professional video editing and professional video production. But actually it's technically impossible with any other kind of web browser based technology. Um, so, and this is what the Blackbird technology has been developed specifically for, is to allow us to do things with video in a browser that nobody else can do. So built around this responsive um, and immediate access to frame-based content in a browser is uh, all of the other tools and uh, an efficient edit functions that we have in the platform that we'll look at in the demo today. Okay, so before I log in, I'm just going to, as I say, run through and talk about how we deploy, deploy Blackbird and, and what that architecture looks like. So essentially, um, we have a software application called Blackbird Edge, and this gets deployed onto your infrastructure, onto customer or partner infrastructure. Um, Blackbird Edge is going to receive your live streams, and it's going to uh, access your video media wherever that's sitting on your storage infrastructure as well. So this can run on, a, on an on-premise server, on a virtual machine, um, virtualized in your own data center, or indeed up in the public cloud providers, so within your, your own AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. Essentially, wherever your media sits, we're going to access it. In terms of live streams, that could be baseband SDI on the ground, uh, RTMP or HLS feeds, growing MXF files, uh, and in terms of file-based content, we're gonna watch and scan pretty much any standard file format. So as soon as Blackbird Edge receives a live stream or it sees a, a file on a particular location, it's going to do a transcode on the fly to that Blackbird format that we saw on our website. That goes to the cloud, and that's what the users will log in and access. So the users are not connecting to your infrastructure at all. They're not connecting to your source media. They're using the Blackbird cloud and that technology that I've talked about to provide them with that high level of, of um, edit capabilities in the browser interface. Now, we're talk, going to look at those, those functions specifically, but when I've created something and I do a publish, then all we actually send back is some metadata back into that Blackbird Edge application, and it's going to find your source media or find the source stream mezzanine, and we're going to publish a piece of content out. So traditionally, we're publishing back into uh, local storage, back into a NAS on-premise. Maybe a CDN or a MAM function is going to pick this up with uh, an XML sidecar, um, or we can deliver straight back within your, your Amazon S3 or, or so on, depending on where your source media is held in public cloud. And we can also do a, uh, a direct to social media publish as well. And you can actually see in the bottom corner, we also have the ability to hand an AAF back to uh, Premiere or Avid in order for, for finishing in certain workflows too. And we'll talk about why and when you might want to do that. 
But there's a couple of key advantages to this kind of setup. Um, one at the moment, particularly relevant, is the fact that we can deploy a virtual machine remotely that's going to watch a network attached storage or existing on-premise infrastructure and actually give you a cloud workflow without any cloud infrastructure at all behind, uh, you know, on your, on your own uh, site. Uh, the other thing, obviously, is the fact that we're always using your source media to publish from. So as I mentioned, I could give you a, a low bit rate H.264 for social and also a, a very high bit rate, you know, MXF file or something that's going to go for, for distribution elsewhere. Uh, but one of the, the, the probably the key benefit to what the Blackbird technology enables and how we, we architect it is around scale. And if we look at alternative solutions for professional editing, you're talking about taking an application putting that up in, in the cloud with a, a, its own virtual machine and a GPU behind it, some local storage, which means you need to move media to the cloud as well. And then every single user is going to need a, a virtual desktop solution. Probably most of them require a 30 to 50 megabit internet connection um, and some client, client hardware requirements as well. So for every single user in that kind of environment, you have quite a lot of cloud infrastructure, quite a lot of bandwidth and a, and a lot of heavy um, requirements behind it. Now, uh, with the Blackbird architecture, if the Edge sees the live stream or, or sees some file storage, then you can have one user or 100 users or 1,000 users accessing and editing on that content. There is no infrastructure requirement at all. And those users can be using their standard laptops on their low, you know, two megabit home uh, internet connections, as I said, to connect in. So the prospect when you have a true cloud technology allowing browser-based editing um, brings a you know, a whole new uh, range of capabilities in terms of how you scale up. So let's, uh, let's jump back to the browser in that case, and we'll see if we can uh, log in and have a look at the platform now. Okay, so when I come to Blackbird Cloud here, I'm gonna, gonna log in, and it brings me into what we call the control center. Now, for most users, I'm going to pick a project here, we, we call them accounts, um, and I'm going to choose to edit in it. So uh, when I click this edit button, it's going to open up a, uh, an edit window in our JavaScript editor in the browser for me. But before I do that, I'm just going to actually click into an account and briefly have a look at the control center here. So if you're an administrator, the control center is where we manage users, uh, usage statistics, including you can see uh, editing times, publishing times, media storage, and various other functions. And um, I can also manage my media, my inputs, and my publishing. So uh, often we're sat picking media off from, from other functions, again, with, with metadata capabilities coming in. But I can actually preview, update metadata, view any of the media on my platform in here. And I can even perform publish functions from inside the control center as well. So that's a straight drag and drop into my, uh, my publish button here. In terms of the publishing, we can have any number of published destinations you can see a lot of these might be the standard social media published uh, outputs. Um, or I can do a file render that's going to end up being delivered by, via FTP back into your cloud storage, um, or just a standard file render here. You can see I've got an, an H.264, and I've also got a 50 megabit XD cam. These don't have to be individual within this one publish button. I can come and add um, various publish functions to give me a range of outputs according to whatever kind of uh, files I need for distribution. As I said before, for most users, they're going to pick a project, they're going to hit edit, and they're going to come into the edit interface now. Now, again, I'm running entirely natively in a web browser. I'm just in Google Chrome at the moment. We do not have any extensions, toolbars, plugins, anything like that. This is completely browser native. And I also have no local media on my machine at all. So uh, what, I, what I can do now is come in and, and access any of the content that's actually existing back on my traditional infrastructure here via the Blackbird Cloud as well. So if I open a piece of media here, um, you'll see I have absolutely instant access to this video. I can immediately start to full frame jog and shuttle through this content. And this is actually, uh, if I come to the end here, it's actually a 24 hour piece of media. Now I can move anywhere within that 24 hours, drop my cursor, zoom in with my mouse here and see every single frame of content. So I come out, again, I have a nonlinear movement through this access, uh, through this media. I come in, I view every single frame. If I come out of here and, and find a different piece of content, again, um, what do I want to work on? Here we go, let's have a look at this. Uh, I can open it, 
instantly have access to this full frame jog, jog and shuttle through again no blockiness or buffering or latency and I can come in and see um, every single frame of media here. So what we have in essence and what our technology is enabling is instant access to any frame of an unlimited amount of media. Um, and we are not moving, downloading files or anything like that. It's all being rendered and managed completely natively within my browser session as well. Now, if this is a, a live stream, um, we have one here. If the orange bar is indicating that this content is, is growing into the platform. Again, I have instant access to this, but if I come to the end, these chevrons on my, my waveform tell me that this is a growing stream. And I would now be sat, as I said before, about five seconds behind live. So within a few seconds of, 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 um, of a live stream coming in, I can be watching this, viewing it, moving forward frame by frame with audio feedback as well, and I can be uh, editing and clipping. And this interface that I'm looking at now is obviously very simple. This is mainly used by social media and digital teams um, in our customers. So our, our first and simplest workflow in terms of creating publishing would be, yeah, get rid of my audio there, would be me sat on this stream. If something happens, I hit my big mark out button or I use a hotkey, I create a clip and I drag and drop and publish. Now, because this is a, a Facebook publish button, I get a Facebook specific pop-up to allow me integrated metadata fulfillment. Any other button can have a relevant uh, social media pop-ups or, or indeed their own custom metadata publish information to put in as well. So we have a lot of customers that might do a, a file render that's going to then allow them to use drop downs and, and input information that's relevant to a CMS or a MAM to handle the distribution of that content afterwards. Now, in that workflow, I can have created a clip and action to publish maybe within 10 seconds of a live event happening. So Blackbird is used a lot for extremely fast turnaround um, of content, often for social digital outputs and so on. Now, if I change my view slightly here, I can come and do start to do something a little more um, advanced. Uh, and this is a, still a non-technical view that's designed to enable me to now do a simple sequence of content. So, Again, I can move around anywhere I like within my, my media. I'm going to make some selections and just start to build a pretty uh, simple thumbnail-based sequence of um, clips. Now, anything I do, because uh, we're running 100% inside the browser session, uh, is given to me back here immediately um, to preview. So I can move these clips around. I can come and I can watch and, and shuttle through my, my created, if I wish, here. And we're never sending something back to a server for, for previews or feedback. This is rendered 100% inside my browser. If I'm, if I'm happy with this clip, exactly the same as I did before, I can drag and drop and publish. And it's worth mentioning that every publish button here um, can automatically put branding on. So logo overlays, pre and post roll bumpers, um, square portrait publishing and so on can be 100% automated within the actual publish function itself. Obviously, when we're in an edit timeline, we can do that manually as well. And I think Hugh's probably going to show us some of that. So aside from publishing this sequence, um, the other function that this storyboard view gets used for a lot is collaboration, um, which is exactly what we'll do now. So I could be a non-technical editorial user or someone on the production team searching through the, the available metadata in the platform, finding pieces of content or sat on a live stream, clipping up events as they happen. Um, and then another user could log in and actually finish and edit this content. So if I come and, and save this, I'm going to call it Ollie Sequence. Then Hugh, who is uh, a couple of hundred miles away from me right now, can log into to, to, in his browser, pick up the sequence that I've made, and actually do a professional edit on that. So um, at that point, I will I'll stop sharing and I'll, I'll hand over to Hugh and he can continue with that piece of content. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ollie. So just whilst I share my screen, um, a few things to, to reiterate, really. Um, Ollie's been using some of the more basic views of Blackbird. Um, but what you'll note from my screen share now is that I've immediately launched myself into one of the slightly more advanced modes. Uh, so this would be the typical user experience for uh, a more professional editing ex experience and more finished content. Um, so what we do within the Blackbird application is, is tailor the views according to the roles of the end users. Um, 
So in terms of collaborative aspects, um, I would certainly reiterate that both Ollie and myself are working off the same pool of media. Um, so this is exactly the same live stream that he was creating his, his editing sequence from. Uh, and this is the pool of content available within that account. So I can very rapidly pull up his sequence. So these are the four clips that he's put on the timeline back to back. Uh, I can immediately preview. And again, I would reiterate that um, obviously you're seeing this over a Zoom connection. So it's entirely possible that you're seeing a slightly lower frame rate representation. But um, essentially what I'm experiencing at this end is full frame, accurate navigation um, and very, very tactile and responsive user interface. Um, Again, as Ollie mentioned, this is running entirely in a standard Chrome web browser. I've got no plugins or, or extensions that I've had to install. Essentially, I've been provisioned within the platform with access to this, this pool of media. Um, and this pool of media allows me to gain access to all of the footage that you'll see here. So, so this type of workflow for cross-person and cross-location collaboration is very typical for a lot of sports workflows, especially where we've got... Uh, either decentralized operations or indeed with the current climate um, having a situation where the primary users are, are actually all remote um, even if the content is is not live potentially you know at the moment with with situations around sporting content obviously there being a bit of a lack of, of true live but um, being able to get the fast access to potentially the repurposed shows that are being pushed in alongside any um, rebroadcasts or, or re-airs of, of past content. So Ollie's edit um, is a four clip sequence. So this would be very typical for a back-to-back -back editing sequence from a social editor or a clipper that's getting fast access to content out to social. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is take this to a slightly more uh, advanced and refined edit. Um, so you'll see here, obviously, I've got the four clips on the timeline. I've got the full frame by frame control that you would expect um, and that Ollie's shown. So what I'm going to do is, is make a few decisions about this content. Um, I may actually decide that this first shot of the guy with the water bottle, um, maybe that's not exactly what I was looking for. So I'll just quickly trim that off the end there. Um, I might decide that this this shot of the what looks like the team manager um, um, providing some some fairly animated uh, commentary on some action there is is one to keep, uh, and then we've got a couple of bits of good action within that clip, but what I may well actually do is just trim back that last clip slightly. Um, so what I'm really doing is exposing some of the frame accurate controls that we've got within Blackbird. Um, and in that respect, I'm also going to just trim this particular edit point back ever so slightly uh, away from that initial huddle. Um, and typical for, for a lot of sports and news um, uh, output at the moment for, for highlights is uh, being able to do um, video fades, uh, especially in, in particular uh, uh, workflows, things like uh, flashing through white so I've just very quickly manually created that flash through white that you'll see on the screen there again I'm not having to wait for any rendering no delays this is working entirely off the Blackbird version of the asset um, and what I'll do is I'll just add a similar V fade across to the the next two clip boundaries as well um, I've selected white as my chosen color. It's very, very popular in terms of uh, output of content at the moment, um, but that can actually be any color. Um, and these can be all preset according to a number of keyboard shortcuts, which uh, anyone who's maybe familiar with something like a, an Adobe Premiere or an Avid, you know, traditional video editor that runs on a local installed desktop, um, essentially those keyboards mappings are available within this Blackbird application as well running in the browser. Um, so now I've got my, my three shots um, and I think what I'll do for this is, is take it a little bit further than the initial, uh, initial three shot. Um, what I may decide to do is potentially put on some of my brand identification. Um, so I'll put this live sports shard graphic on that's a, just a full frame graphic that I've preceded those those three shots with um, given that it's got a black background uh, I'll do a little bit of tuning on this particular cross this uh, particular fade and I'll actually take that fade 
from black so that it's a nice smooth transition from a live sports frame over into the first clip of, uh, of uh, as I say, what looks like the, uh, the manager of this particular team. Um, so you'll start to see that I'm building up the, the presentation of this overall asset. And again, I'm not having to ever render no delays, uh, no latency. Um, really, I'm focused on the content rather than the process of, of uh, managing it. So a couple of other things. Um, I've actually got access as a more advanced user to multiple layers of, of sequence. So this could be anything up to 12 simultaneous video channels, 36 simultaneous audio channels, along with titling and captioning. Essentially, you'll get an idea, but I'm really gonna focus on the first two layers, but essentially that can be multi-layer and, and very complex edits really with the primary objective being able to do as much as possible within Blackbird again without having to go back to one of those traditional editing platforms so I've, I've just dragged on um, a static uh, banner this lower lower banner here the white banner with the little Blackbird logo so that's obviously coming with a transparency layer as well um, so we support static and animated assets with with transparency as as video layers um, So I'll do a couple of things on that. I think what I'll do is just fade it fade it in and out uh, So that's gonna actually fade from a transparent uh, Overlay onto the asset and then back off at the end um, And then towards the end. I think what we'll do is put a an end board on just to identify again, keep the brand presence very, very high. Um, and you'll see this is a, a, just a static logo. So I'll come on to a few of the more advanced techniques um, in a moment. But essentially what I'll do is, obviously I can identify that this is a nice white uh, piece of content. I'll do exactly the same as I did before with a bit of, uh, a, bit of a trim, uh, a fade from, uh, sorry, from the content to white. Um, again, gives it a more professional look and feel and flow for the content. So in addition to the base, uh, what I would call assembly and, and editing of, of assets, we've also got some, some more advanced features like, for example, being able to uh, do, do in-browser um, color adjustments. So things like being able to uh, manipulate uh, individual color saturation or white balance, uh, sorry, white levels, uh, color saturation, um, and, and those types of controls with, you know, a lot of the content that's being generated going to, to web and to social and delivered to, to various different apps and outlets. Really what uh, people are often looking to do is to make sure that the content looks as, as appealable to the end consumer as possible so that it catches their eye in, in potentially a, uh, a very high quantity of content that they may be uh, trying to absorb at any one time. So I've just applied a quick color adjustment to that, that last clip. Um, we'll run through and do similar. So I'm just gonna do this visually We'll do a bit of adjustment on the black levels, the saturation. Again, the primary objective being to, to really make sure that when our content reaches the consumer or the, the, the person that's gonna be um, um, essentially engaging with this media, it looks as, as uh, attractive as possible. So I've, I've very quickly done a three, three individual color adjustments, again, in browser, in real time, no plugins, no extensions, no waiting for rendering delays. Um, so, so really at this point, what I've got is, is a nice overall presentation. So I'm gonna take that maybe one step further with uh, a bit of uh, overlaid um, titles. So I'm actually gonna take that and uh, I'll just align it over the whole of the the, that lower bar um, and then tweak some of the styling with of what might be a brand specific font for my particular um, purposes. I'm also going to change some of the styling there and we'll just drop that in and position it across to, uh, actually I think we'll put that central. So again, these are all things that allow us to get content to a more uh, professional and consumable output. Um, the key things really are that I'm building up, building up on that original 
sequence that Ollie created um, and essentially being able to take that to a grade at which again I'm not having to go back to a traditional editor so I'm not having to transfer that original source footage out of any cloud or any on-premise location this is all working and totally abstracted from the original uh, source media through through this browser experience um, I could potentially add things like voiceovers so recording directly from my laptop um, into the editor which will associate that and push that that voiceover recording into the cloud and essentially anything that I can see review and use on the timeline can be output it as a published and finished asset to to deliver to an output platform I'm just going to go through um, a couple of additional steps that um, uh, some users may also uh, find interesting so I can take a look at all my various different audio levels and potentially do some <laughs> manipulation of panning controls or level controls um, also for uh, many many situations uh, like for example this end board here, it's a very static image. Um, it is itself just, a, just an image. So what we can do is to apply potentially some, some more dynamic nature to it. So I'm actually just going to uh, do a bit of uh, rescaling here. So I'll put a couple of control po points in and we'll do a small zoom into that. Again, just being able to make it a little bit more uh, dynamic. So I'll, I'll also put a slight curve into that. So it's a slightly accelerating, zoom in to that particular end board again makes it all appear a little bit more dynamic for the types of content that we've got so the full ability to handle all of this as well as all of the original source content um, and then also when we look at deliveries uh, the increase in what i would say non-widescreen outputs so things like square uh, vertical uh, uh, four by uh, four by fives, multiple different output scaling factors according to in many cases things like social or web uh, consumable scales so I've just toggled on my my safe zones here so that I can see exactly where the contents going to going to land um, and similar to what I applied to that that uh, end board I can also apply moves to the original content so uh, potentially on this one if I was looking at my square safe zone I may actually decide that the best positioning for this is just to move the the, the gentleman there across into the center of the screen which you see I've done very rapidly and essentially that would then signify that he's going to be center frame uh, in a safe zone for a vertical or a square delivery so these are all again more advanced trick, tricks and tips which can take the output uh, of, uh, of this particular delivery and make sure that it's going to be fit for the destination that it's being pushed to. Again, a few things I'd reiterate. I've, I've not had to ever go back to any high resolution content transfer. I've done everything in this browser. I can then, as part of the collaborative workflow, I can save this sequence back. Uh, I'm not actually going to do any renaming. Essentially, I've I've now taken Ollie's original four clip sequence, turned it into a three clip sequence with those additional graphic elements, a little bit more dynamic content, um, and then saved it back into the platform. Obviously, it may be the case that actually Ollie's original uh, four clip sequence was, was absolutely suitable. So you'll see here, we've got full version control of, of anything within the platform. I could potentially pull his original sequence back up. Um, or even just revert back to it should I feel fit. Um, so the nature of, of cloud is, is obviously that because these are really references to files, there's nothing that I can do that's destructive. I, I can delete things, I can modify them. We've got a full change by change recovery. So all of the undo and redo features and functionality as well as a full recycle bin that shows all of the prior assets and edits that have been through this particular account. And ultimately, you know, the destination for the majority of these styles of workflows is to deliver an asset out. So whether that's delivering this rendered asset to, uh, to social or to a downloadable uh, delivery or um, potentially for you know a lot of sporting workflows things like gif outputs that can then be posted to web and social again 
as well as back to broadcast output formats if if uh, these are required for archive or broadcast purposes in the future again all of these are role-based accesses to, to publishing destinations and behind the scenes what's happening is all of these instructions that I've created go back into the platform and then get delivered uh, out, put out to the various different uh, um, outputs according to that back-end configuration so you see at the moment this is just currently compressing so it's taking the various different elements from my timeline compressing them putting them together into uh, a finished asset but most importantly it's rendering back from the original source streams or files that have been uh, created or ingested through that edge technology please do um, get in touch via the, the email address you can see on screen right now or through the website thank you very much for your time um, we hope to speak to you very soon